How to use class tracking in new QuickBooks Online. So here is uh, QuickBooks Online Plus. I'm already logged in. Uh, and uh, so you got to have an Online Plus to use class tracking. If you have Essentials or Simple Start, you won't have class tracking. So you need to upgrade to QuickBooks Online Plus. So that's the only one has class tracking feature. And by the way, if you want to upgrade it, you can download it. So it's a one-way track. So you gotta think twice before you upgrade it. So if you really need it, then you can upgrade to QuickBooks Online Plus, and then you can have the class tracking. Once again, it's a one-way track. You can download. You can you you can downgrade uh, your uh, subscription. Okay, so. Uh, so I'm already logged in here. Uh, this is a new QBO.com website here. The first thing you need to do is you'll need to enable class tracking on. So in order to do that, you need to click the gear icon here. Here's the gear, company gear here, right here. So click this one and click company settings, company settings. Okay, and so right now I'm at company settings here. And if you come down, you'll see categories here. And this is where you have track cl classes. It's on and off. Right now, it's, it's already on. Let's click this one, just one click. All right, so it will, it will say uh, track classes. Let's check box that one. And if you want to uh, get warning, if you know, uh, it say warn me when a transaction is not assigned a class. So it's a good idea to uh, give warning sign. Okay, and within assigned classes, they have two options here. One to entire transaction. The second one is one to each row in transaction. So let's just say one to entire transaction and see how that will look. Save it. And let's say you, you want to go to uh, enter uh, expenses here. Let's click here and expense. As you can see here, the class is right here. So you can select class right here. Right here, class. Right, uh, it's a row here, customer. Next to customer is class. Uh, and this thing will apply to invoices as well. So if you just click invoice, you also see class. See, the class is right here. So this is just for uh, invoice. So if you have uh, invoice, it will select just one class here. But if you have invoice and that you want to distribute to more than one class, this selection is not good enough. So in order to do that, you have to go back and click the gear again, click the company settings and track classes here. And it's, you want one, you want to select the other one, one to each row in transaction, rather than one to entire transaction. So select this one and see what happens now. So let's go back to uh, invoice again. So as you can see here, it used to be here, the class used to be here. Now they moved in here. For example, let's say here is a installation uh, revenue. Let's say installation is, this is the one you use. Let's say this is for service. And let's say you have another one for uh, uh, product sales. Like this. So you have class in here rather than here. So if you have, uh, you want to use more than one class in one invoice, then this is the way to go. Okay. So in this case I already have a class set up but how do you set up a new uh, class uh, and uh, you just close this one here okay and go back to company gear again here right here and click all list here all list this one here under list all list and this is all list here. As you can see here, the classes are right here. Click classes here. 
So it's better to have give some thoughts what type of how do you want to create classes for your own company, you know? Uh, just think about it and uh, you don't want to make a big laundry list of classes. So your classes you have to design in such a way that you can use it and make uh, make use, useful tool for your business. Uh, so in this case, the example, this company is set up as like a selling uh, uh, cell phones and in cell phones they have a product sales and they do service business and they also do insulation so the classes are designed in in this way here so you can design classes by department let's say you want to design class by department sales administrative uh, marketing production so you have to give a thought how do you want to set up class so this is where you should set up class uh, don't try to make a laundry list, otherwise it would be very hard to run a profit and loss by class later on. And uh, plus it would be difficult to uh, select class when you want to enter transactions as well. So you should give, give some thought and try to figure out what's best for your business. So all you have to do is think about how many classes you want to create and how do you want to create. Do you want to create by department or you want to create by product or something else. So you can create any way you want it. So all you have to do is click new here and name something. Name something here. Let's say product. And and you can all even create a product A. And you can even create a subclass here if you need it. So uh, let's say this you will just want to create a subclass of this. You can do that too. Uh, so just try don't try to make it uh, uh, too hard to manage later on. After all, you have to enter class when you enter all the transactions here. You have to select class in here whenever you want to enter transactions for any expenses or or income. So you have to be able to select class. If you if you can't select it, then it doesn't serve the purpose. So. So give some thought on this one, how do you want to create class for your business? And it's, once you create it, it's, it's kind of hard to go back and, and fix it. So, you know, it's better to spend some time and uh, have some meeting and uh, uh, create what's best for your business. Okay, so now, you know, once you have created uh, new classes for your business, and design in such a way that you know the, when you run the PL by class it means something so so when you want to create expense as I said all you have to do is enter here let's say uh, you want to let's say you have a travel expense here and uh, you send someone to uh, uh, travel expense let's just create here let's say travel expense Let's say $200 and you send someone uh, to do the installation. So in this case, you just create class by installation like this. And let's you know, say you have another one here, uh, another travel expense. And another $300. And let's say this is for a service call like this and you just save it so this is the total total bill so this is how you enter uh, your expenses and track by class and same thing goes to uh, invoice let's say you want to invoice somebody for something let's say you want to sell some iPhone example here and the classes product sales this is how long track I'll say you, you also have some uh, service revenue on this invoice you can just create service and class also service let's say the amount is $100 this is for this for, just for an example so the save save and close as you can see you have selected that way uh, so that's about it on the uh, uh, class uh, tracking 
to enter it. Now let's just look at the report, whatever reports we can get with this one. There are a bunch of reports, but the big one is the from here. This is the blue navigation bar. You select reports. Blue navigation bar on the left. Select report. And we say just the go-to report. Here's a magnifying glass. Just type profit. And it will give you all the reports related to profit and loss. As you can see, it is your profit and loss my class. Okay, so this is the type of report you will get. Uh, in this example, we have created uh, installation as a class, product sales as a class, and service as a class. And it says not specify. So that means when you enter uh, certain transactions, you didn't enter class. So let's say, for example, this one it says 157. You will have a whole bunch of list here. Uh, this is, you know, just have to go back and let's just say shipping income. You just click this one. You see one entry maybe. So is the product sales here, and uh, in here the shipping. There's no class here, so that's why it's not transfer in here. So you have to do some reclass in there. Go back to summary, and let's say uh, this one here. So you have to go back and assign class for all these transactions so that you go away from not specified to specified. Let's we'll say uh, this one here. So there's no class here. So you just have to go back and select class. So you got an idea. You have to, when you enter it, if you just leave it blank, then it will it won't assign to class, it will just say not specify. So you have to go back and uh, and you have to go back and basically uh, assign class for all those transactions now it's going down. The same thing applies to all these expenses. And uh, there may be some expenses, it's hard to classify where you should go, especially in the overhead tax expenses, you know, it doesn't belong to installation or product or service uh, in that case you just have to create like a some sort of a overhead type for example in here the ten dollar here so it's ten dollar here meals entertainment right now all we have is insulation park sales service so we don't know where it should go you can just create a new one and you can just say for example this one is basically overhead type so we'll save it Save and close. So now you will see now we'll see basically service here and over here is right here. So right here. So basically if you want to move or reduce all all non specified, that's how you have to do it. So in as a general rule, this non specified should go away and it should be reclassified to uh, any of these classes and it's so certain in uh, most of the overhead if you can classify to by class this will go to overhead here. and as you can see here right now is a profit and loss by class but in here non-specified you have a big 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 income sitting in there so you have to reclass all these numbers to appropriate class that way you'll have a we have a more meaningful profit and loss report. So basically that's about it. So uh, you know how to use class and uh, uh, tracking and equipment now. And uh, as I said, the tip number one is always to use Google Chrome. If you're not using Google Chrome, and if you're not a fan of Google Chrome using Explorer or Firefox, uh, you, you will have some problem using QuickBooks online. So it's, it's be always better to use Google Chrome. So that's what I'm using here. As you can see, everything will work fine. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's about it. And and in, in, in summary, so this is what, how we did it. So basically, first you need to do enable class tracking on. You know, do that you, from gear, select gear, company, categories, and track classes on. 
and create uh, then you create new classes at this point it's better to create uh, more than one here uh, that way uh, when you try to enter it then you know uh, where you should, you should select class there so let's create new classes and then start entering uh, transactions invoice expense bill and so on all we have to do is select class and enter transactions then done and then at the end you can run profit and loss by class report it will give you uh, the bottom line report detail report whatever report you need and uh, if you see any unidentified category column there that means you have an assigned class and you need to go back and assign class so that that, that column uh, will go away so basically that's about it and uh, visit our website it's newqbo.com newqbo.com and we have all kinds of uh, resources related to QuickBooks Online. Thank you for watching. Bye.